Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great, sir. Great, madams. Okay, very good. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so we'll proceed for the uh, topic. Uh, but where is the topic? What is the name of the topic? Sir, all for love. All, all for, for love. love. All for love. All for love. Yes. So, which is written by John Dryden. So, <clears throat> it's a one of the best play, or you can say tragic play, uh, <clears throat> which is written by John Dryden. So, Dryden himself. If you talk about him, right? So acknowledge that his written play, All for Love, is an imitation. Imitation of what? Imitation means copy. Copy of whom? Now, William Shakespeare's written. Shakespeare's uh, drama, Anthony and Cleopatra. Cleopatra, yes. So, uh, you know, Shakespeare's, any of the drama you take, you would find out that the character means uh, maybe Anthony or maybe Cleopatra would be present, right? So, if you talk about that, uh, this particular uh, play also, which was written means uh, uh, in the year of 1667, that also imitating Anthony and Cleopatra's uh, character in Shakespeare's, right? Or Shakespeare's written Antony and Cleopatra, which was also written in the early 1600s. It is a heroic drama. What do you mean by heroic drama? So it gives us the praising to uh, the uh, main character of the play. That is why we consider it is a heroic drama that follows many of the same story that beats up William Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra. But John Dryden restricts the action of the story. Right? John Dryden what, did what? Now confines the action of the story to Alexandria and the details, the last hours of Antony and Cleopatra's doomed relationship. What do you mean by doomed relationship? Now that's something called as a relationship that continues till the end of the judgment day, right? It examines not only the end of their relationship, but the end of the Egyptian empire, right? So if I want to make it very uh, short and in a very quick way, so the original production premiered in 1677 and was performed by the King's Company. Right. So then it uh, revived in 1704 at Lincoln's in Fields. Right. So it means what? When any of the plays written, so that used for the dramatized. Right. And that's what it happened. The original production held or began in the year of 1677, means it uh, produced before the spectators and was performed by the King's Company and it was made by whom? King's Company. Again? Then after it revived, it again made uh, or edify or called as a uh, reproduced 1704 at Lincoln's End Festival. For a time, Dryden's version of the story became the preferred one and the six years version was not performed again after its premiere until 1813 in London, right? So if you talk about that, the play has been somehow called as a replicate, right? Or replicate, or you can say reflected also. Replicated means copied. Reflected means remembering. To whom? Now, William Shakespeare's written Antony and Cleopatra. So Shakespeare's, Shakespeare's version was not performed again until 1813 in London. But when, uh, if you talk about John Dryden's written All for Love uh, is known as a famous one and most widely read poem or read, sorry, not poem, read play. It is rarely performed. 
यस मैडम सर स्क्रीन शेयर करबा भूल जाय छथे आपण कहार ई आज फॉर लाग रहा इट इज रियली परफॉर्मड बाय कंटेम्पररी थिएटर कंपनीज ओके सो डिड आई ओके वेट अ मिनट अरे यार Are you yes I forgot to share the screen Do you find out now Can you see it Yes sir Yes sir Yes sir Yes sir, yes, sir. Okay madam Okay so that is what you would find out in this particular play So this is nothing but a, a short description you can say next stage all for love uh, you can see that the picture is presented here so all for love or the world well lost right you can say that uh, two different names have been given so all for love or the world well lost is a 1677 heroic drama written by john dryden which is now his best known and most performed play it is a tragedy written in blank verse please do remember that it is a tragedy written in blank verse and it is an attempt on dryden's part to reinvigorate reinvigorate means something which is called as a, a creating a kind of a feelings or happiness right uh, or you can say dryden's part to reinvigorate uh, serious drama so loosening the emotion right loosening the happiness and creating the seriousness it is an acknowledgement it is an acknowledgement means it is an acceptance that it this play is the copied of william shakespeare's antony and cleopatra and it focuses on the last hours of the lives last hour of the lives of its heroes and heroines okay so uh let's move to the next one the next one is indicating about all for love character list we will go one by one the characters and we discuss about uh their presentation in the particular uh, play so the first one is the protagonist of the play uh, antony we know that a previously successful roman general so who is antony now he is a previously successful roman general antony who has essentially gone into retirement following his humiliating defeat at actium please do understand the kind of a term called as antony the name of the hero right so what is his role now he has he has essentially gone into retirement right removed from the service or called uh, not removed actually means he completed his job and he moved towards humiliating defeat at actium humiliating defeat at actium means why did he uh, decide to go for the retirement now because of his defeat held in actium right so in that case that defeat is nothing but an embarrassment to him right therefore he decides to remove from its own service as the play begins we find out that his relationship with the beautiful egyptian queen so what is the name of that egyptian queen now it's called as a cleopatra and which is unraveling which is called as a full of passionate right full of interesting and everybody knows that he is antony is a passionately attached attached to whom cleopatra the heroine of the play and here it is described as or he is described as possessing large and unsubtle feelings 
he is means antony is feeling or uh, sorry antony is described as what now possessing large and unsubtle unsubtle means something which is not a small feelings it's something called as a huge feelings for cleopatra which not only antony for cleopatra it's also cleopatra for antony and both make him a brave and great man both make him a brave a brave and great man it means you can say that the possessing one of the important figure into your life and you have created a large or huge emotions for her so that emotions and keeping both are nothing but indicating that you have a brave and great man but can also undermine him but at the same time this can be called as a negative impact right sometimes it happens like what uh, i don't say that marriage is somehow the negative one right but imagine that whoever decides to get into the marriage it's considering as the bravest person the brave man in his life why so because he does what he poses a omen he poses poses means that called as a, he is going to spend all his life with her that is the first thing second thing is called as a, he carries the unsubtle feelings unsubtle means not a small emotion for her it's something called as a huge emotion for her expectations for her right so uh, and the attachment now when you look into that so you would find out that the person is nothing but a great man or a brave man but at the same time the same omen can also the cause of your undermine, uh, undermine or called as a weakening part so vice versa it's not applicable to the man it's also applicable to the omen as well right omen also takes the very huge decision to get into the marriage and uh, uh, keeping one of the person as the life partner at the same time having a lot of hope or expectation and considering that Uh, he will be loyal and faithful right but at the same time the man who have a means uh, if you may have uh, you may find out some kind of a man who um, who is nothing but a negative in character billion in nature extra material affair then you would find out the omen definitely turn herself in a weakening situation right so that's why we consider that it's a vice versa here in this situation also we find out antony case is same right so throughout the play we find out that antony possessing the omen whose name is called as a uh, cleopatra and he carried the excessive feelings for her and that makes him that he is a brave and a great man but at the same time that could be the region of his hitch weakening towards the end of the play right if you look into the character towards the end of the play what do you find out he attributes any political and military success he attributes any political and military success he has had to his love for cleopatra right it seems like that when the play is going to end he he carries the quality right that what he would involve in the politics he would involve in the military success right and he he has had to his love for cleopatra and for whom for cleopatra so following the method of political and military success right so in short you can say that antony is a brave and a great man with a ro- successful roman general right uh, and defeated at actium at the same time he possess the egyptian queen named cleopatra his relationship indicates that his attachment to her and keeping the large uh, keeping the huge emotion for her right 
So, but at the same time, love is something that makes him weak. And he tries to protect his love. Right. So, next one is called as a Cleopatra. What is that Cleopatra? Or who is that Cleopatra? If you see that Cleopatra is the infamous queen for, of Egypt who has already enjoyed a romantic relationship with Caesar before taking off with Antony. So you would be amazed that. So it is the second love for Antony. The first love is called as a Caesar, right? It means having a relationship with Caesar, Cleopatra, uh, involved with the another relationship with whom? Antony. She is described as a sexually irresistible, right? Sexually irresistible means it seems like he, uh, her, her love for the Antony was true, but at the same time, means she believes that Antony is her, Antony is an object and she wants to possess us. She is very, you know, possessive in thought, right? And expresses her love for Antony as passionately as he expresses his for her. Like I told you, both have the love for each other. But if you see that Cleopatra's love is more than what means Antony's love seems. Right. So even you will find out while she wants to act in ethical and pure ways that reflect her commitment to Antony, she is easily moved by the or swayed by the strategize of her eunuch and is not above manipulation. So you would find out that a husband and wife or a lover's relationship is pure until the interference is not made by the outsider. So here also you would find out normally the outsiders are the regions for many of the crumbling of emotion. So when we talk about this particular affair between Antony and Cleopatra, we see that Cleopatra wants to act. So her desire is what? To maintain a moral, honest, loyal, and a pure commitment to Antony. But what happened? She, the problem is called as a, she is easily distracted. She is easily influenced by the strategy of her eunuch. A eunuch means that called as a, uh, her assistants, right? Or her advisor and is not above manipulation. So it's somehow called as a kind of a controlling. So she was controlled by her eunuch. Cleopatra is ultimately just as committed to Antony as she is to her. Cleo, Cleopatra is ultimately just as committed to Antony as she is to her. And when given the opportunity to live in Caesar's courts, opts to kill herself instead. So she is very different woman. She loves Antony and she has committed to him. At the same time, she is also very courageous and very self-esteem woman who if have given the opportunity to kill herself in means for Antony or for herself also. And that's what also you would find out. Now, the next one, this is something called as Antony and Cleopatra. So the third one is called as Octavia. Now, who is Octavia? Now, Octavia is a Caesar's sister and wife to Antony. So remember that if you are talking about Cleopatra is uh, it is her second marriage, her second love uh, love affair, right? So, or it is her sec uh, secret affair with Antony. So, Antony is not a whitewash. So, Antony is also, you can say that having a married woman called 
Octavia. Who is Octavia? Now, Octavia is the Caesar's sister. Now, who is Cleopatra? Now, Cleopatra is the man's, Cleopatra has, ha uh, has had the relationship with Caesar, right? In that case, Octavia is the wife of Antony. So she travels to Egypt in order to convince. So she travels means Octavia travels. Where? Now to Egypt. Why? Now in order to persuade, convince Antony. Why? Now to return to his country and to return to his family. You are a married, a married man, right? So you leave your family, you leave your country. Why? Now you are giving excuse that you lost that means you defeat the means uh, war and you exile the country and you came here and you settled so that's why octavia came to convince antony to come back so she is presented octavia is presented as a what pure and noble-hearted woman committed to doing what is right for her family and country now you can consider that Octavia is a very nice woman, at the same time, pure in heart, noble in heart, committed uh, for her country, for her family. In this respect, she is the opposite of Cleopatra and Antony. Now, Cleopatra and Antony, the characters themselves realizes that who they are and what they are. Right. They cannot be called as a, as pure as Octavia. They may be in love, but they are also manipulated. So she is the opposite of Cleopatra and Antony, who respond only to their passions. Who respond only to their passions. So who understand that Antony and Cleopatra are in love. Right. So and understand and agree. Now imagine that. Dola Bella. Now the next character you would find out which is called as a Dola Bella. Who is Dola Bella? Now Dola Bella is one of Antony's dearest old friends. Dola Bella is one of Antony's dearest old friends. Antony's old uh, dearest friend. And Antony and Dola Bella had a very intimate or close friendship. Not till Antony suspected Dola Vela of being attracted to Cleopatra. Now, you are my dearest friend. I have a very close relationship with you. But at the same time, when I come to know that you have also some affection towards my Cleopatra, his beloved, Dola Vela comes to Rome in order to convince Antony to leave Egypt and returns to Rome. Dola Bella comes from Rome in order to convince whom? Antony to leave, uh, sorry, Dola Bella comes to Rome in order to convince Antony to leave Egypt and returns to Rome. That's what Dola Bella's purpose. But if I say it is nothing but a kind of a trap where these people have been fallen. So even Dola Bella himself. <clears throat> so we cannot doubt upon Dola Bella friendship. The next one is called as a Ventidius. Please do remember these characters, so which are very essential. The next one is called as a Ventidius. So who is Ventidius? The Ventidius is Antony's old general. Now, we know that Antony uh, fought and defeated. So, he was the general of Rome. So, Antony's old general, Ventidus, is an older man who has Antony's best interest in mind. So, always keep the thought about Antony and Antony's goodness. He consistently tries to convince Antony. Consistently tries to convince Antony. Why? Now to leave Cleopatra behind and return to his life in Rome and in order to uphold his political power. What is his political power? Now he is the means 
you can say that he is considering as the roman general right so that is why so he is the roman's general and he should uphold or come forward and accept the position in spite of his desire to help in spite of his desire to help so he misinterprets certain events who misinterprets a certain events now when he does misinterprets what do you mean by misinterpreting now wrongly identify wrongly assume certain events and does not do a good enough job of preventing antony from falling back so he did not do much of the things for antony of preventing or stopping from getting degraded means falling back into his codependent relationship with the cleopatra at the end of the play you can find out ventidas chooses to kill himself instead of killing antony now imagine that such a fidelity such a truthful such a loyal when antony told him to attack me and kill me so he decides to kill himself instead of killing antony now the next one is called as a serapion now who is serapion the serapion is a priest serapion is a priest of isis who pretends bad fortune for rome so you know that some people are the well wisher some people are also uh, astrologer some people are the you know, foreteller right so and these people tell the future of the country or future of the person and here you would find out serapion is a priest who portent or called as a who gives a kind of a hint about rome that how rome is leading to bad fortune then the next one we can consider alexas who is alexas now alexas is cleopatra eunuch we know that right when you are talking about uh, alexas so and when we, uh, earlier when we talk about cleopatra we draw the idea that how cleopatra is influenced by who by her eunuch and here the eunuch is alexas you know why alexas now because alexas is the advisor and whatever the whatever cleopatra says alexas does that and alexas have complete faith so the cleopatra have complete faith on alexas that alexas never tells lie now that is what the problem we are the kind of a human being whomever we trust so much we find out he or she is the bridge to that trust and here you would find out somehow alexas is responsible for that alexas is cleopatra's eunuch and very and the closest thing the play has to an antagonist antagonist means what now per, a person who keeps the hatredness who keeps the hatredness means emotions negative emotions or play the negative emotions in the play throughout the play you would find out alexas conspires creates a secret plan why not to keep cleopatra and antony together to keep cleopatra and antony together while also she is uh, trying to protecting uh, so he is trying to protecting himself at the same time he is trying to protecting himself and that actually leads to the confusion and sadness so because when you are trying to protect yourself you say something which are not true and which you you are trying to hide also truth in that case means 
Why not? Because you are trying to protect yourself. So the John Dryden figurizes the character Alexis into a tragic figure, who is also depicted as a lying only to maintain what he is trying to do. He is depicted as means lying only to maintain his previous position. Sometime what happened to keep our position safe. We tell certain lies, and so and that lies means uh, maybe save our position or may make us means into such a situation where we lose everything. So he is ultimately captured by the Roman troops, who means uh, Alexis is ultimately captured by the Roman troops. Means the Roman troops who came to bring back their general antony so we will come to know that what happened why uh, means uh, he won't be able to go so we will discuss in the next class right so today we simply learn about the writer john dryden and his written all for love and the characters what kind of a play it is how it is written, so what kind of a figure of speech that's called as a blank verse, and who are the characters that they play means important in this particular play, right? So that's all for the day. We'll meet in the next class, right? And the next class will start.